in one of my recent videos, I was using my Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL to make some lunch and I was grilling some sausages on top of it. And to be honest, I wasn't happy with the results. So I gave it some thought and I've come up with a solution that I'd like to share with you. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before I show you the solution, I should probably explain what the issue was. So I had my uh, stove, my XL, set up in the fire pit here, same place I was when I was out that day making my lunch. And I had built a fire in it using some pine branches here to get a good roaring fire going. And then I had some maple splits that I cut off of a dead branch here and I was feeding those in. And my intent was is to create a bed of coals that I could grill the sausages over. I mean, that's what you do, right? You use hardwood for grilling coals. Except that the coals never materialized. The, the airflow in the stove was so good that it was consuming the wood and I ended up with more flame than I did coals. I ended up cooking the sausages over the flames. I waited till they died down as much as I could, but I wasn't happy. I, I wanted to have a good glowing bed of coals with no flame that I could grill over without actually scorching and leaving black on my sausages that day. And, uh, you know, it's not as if I hadn't done some grilling or barbecuing with this stove before, but I had always used charcoal. And, and the thing works amazing with charcoal. But I want to be able to use hardwood that I find in the, in the woods. Well, that was the issue. And the solution? Sitting right in front of me the whole time. Let me show you what it was. So the other thing I wanted to do in this video is just to address a few of the questions that came up when I did my comprehensive review of the Pack Stove XL. And uh, I won't be able to answer all the questions in this video or all the comments, but I'll be able to answer a few along the way. One of them was about using the XL with the Stanley Adventure set because, of course, the original stove from uh, Simple Theory Gear was designed to accept the Adventure, the Stanley Adventure set and nest in perfectly but the XL would be too big. Well, yes it is, but it's actually an advantage and I'll show you what you can do with it now that you wouldn't have been able to do with it before. So I'm using the bag from Simple Theory Gear and you can see everything is inside of that stuff sack and that's the way Mac wanted it to be. He wanted to provide a bag that was of good quality, but still of natural materials, so environmentally responsible, and big enough to put just about everything you're likely to nest together. Now, it won't accept a larger pot than than this like it won't use my I can't use my zebra 12 centimeter billy in this but I, I have a stuff sack for that anyway so let me show you what I've got packed inside of here you'll probably know what that is but I'll explain it in a minute so inside the whole package let me get the uh, sheet off is the XL with the Stanley but the Stanley is nested inside a GSI stainless steel glacier mug, the 500 mil one. And that does fit down inside of this stove nicely and accepts the Stanley on top of that. So you have a little bit more room and now you can put a cup in addition to the pot. Uh, you know, that's okay if you like the green cups that come with it, and I do, they're just small and I wanted something a little bit bigger. So that's the reason why I nested these things together. So let's take out what we have, lip guard, Lip guards are nice, not necessary, but uh, you know, just a little creature comfort, right? So, and the way of course that the XL works is that the bottom of the stove, the, the uh, speed plate allows you to lock things in. So I've locked in the ash plate and a little can. Now, Max sells metal cans, screw on metal cans that fit inside of the stove if you wanna put, well, anything you wanna put in there. Primarily, you'd likely carry some for, for, for source of tinder. Uh, this is a, what is it, Watkins Petrocarb empty can that I've had around for years, something that was, uh, well, if you know what this is, uh, great. If you don't, it's you look it up because it's worth looking up. Topical analgesic, again, not the topic uh, under discussion here. And then in inside here, I do have a little bit of tinder, as you can see, that I'll be using in a few moments' time. So, addressing the issue, look at the airflow. Tremendous airflow. It works really well for creating good hot fires, but all that airflow actually works against creating coals. So like this, I said, the solution was sitting right in front of me. How simple is that? Now, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Mark, you just cut off the airflow. The fire is not going to work at all. Uh, actually, the opposite. You'll see in a few minutes time, when I do build a fire in this, it works amazing. And the reason is, Right above the plate, the, the ash pan now sitting on the fire grate, 
Mac has designed in slots all the way around. That provides more than enough airflow flowing in across the bottom of the plate and up through the sides of the stove to create a good hot fire. Yet that plate slows down the ashes and coals from dropping through and keeps them on top of it and allows for some great grilling as you're going to see. How simple does that get? All right, so we're going to set this up in the fire pit so I can get my lunch on. Lunch today is I'll be grilling again. This time it's going to be a piece of kielbasa, but I'm also going to be resetting the stove up afterwards with wood pellets because that was one of the other things that people asked about was uh, what does it look like using the XL with wood pellets? Well, I'll show you. All right, I'll get this set up in the fire pit and we'll get a little fire going in it. And we'll have to wait, of course, till the uh, wood burns down to coals. But when it does, then I'll grill my sausage. So, yeah, uh, I can see that I'm <laughs> directly in line with the sun. I'm casting shadow over the stove. So I'll get out of the light as quickly as I can once I can get the stove lit. And uh, I just face the feed port towards the camera so you get a better idea of what's taking place here. Uh, these are a fire starter I've been playing with. They're a commercially available one. They're, they're called tumbleweeds. And uh, I think they're Kingsford? Or no, they're not Kingsford, but they're something like that. They're kind of nice, just wood shreds with wax on them. Very simple. Probably don't need all of that to get this fire going, but I'm not going to play with too much other wood. Jeez, I don't think I'll need that. But uh, let's put in a few small pieces to start. Get the fire going. I will not so, not speed up the camera, but what I will do is cut away and then come back once it's really fully engaged. I'm going to add a little bit of fat wood just for the fun of it because who doesn't love for some fat wood? I think two pieces would be enough. Let me get out of the light so you can see how quickly even with that plate it is starting to catch on. Mac's done a good job designing this as you can see. It, it uh, catches on regardless. The airflow is just well designed, just well designed. There's no other way to say it. So it's catching on quickly. I'm going to let it build up a little bit, and then I'll start throwing in some hardwood pieces. But uh, already you can see that plate is not in any way hampered airflow into the stove for creation of a fire. All right, bring it back when I get some of the hardwood going well, and then we'll watch it die down to coals. So that only took a, I don't know, five minutes, maybe 10 minutes at the most for that to turn into hot coals. Can you see those? Beautiful. That's what you're looking for when you're trying to barbecue. I'm creating shadow intentionally so you can see the coals. Now I'll put the grill on and we'll put my kibosa sausage on. Oh yeah, there's heat coming out of there for sure. Wonderful locally made kibosa sausage. Yeah, lots of heat. Now, if the heat starts to drop off, which I don't think it will, I'll keep an eye on it just to give you an idea how long that that uh, took. I, I didn't quite fill the chamber of the stove with hardwood. And the hardwood I'm using is exactly the stuff that was out here last time. I didn't pick up anything new. Uh, I just had the stuff left over. And it had been snowed on and rained on. It's dry again. But uh, I guess it's probably not as dry as if I had kept it at home. I guess what I'm saying is that even if the wood is slightly, slightly damp, there's no question that this stove, with the airflow that it has, will ignite the wood, as long as you get a good base fire going, and it's working fine. So, yeah, I'll keep an eye on the amount of time just, uh, you know, that uh, the coals last, but I think they're going to be plenty to do this sausage. If I found that it wasn't long enough, I could pull the sausage off, throw another piece of wood on, and either move the sausage away from the flames or just wait again a few more minutes for those flames to die down. You can see the sausage are already starting to grill up. I can see the browning around the edges and some smoke coming off it and a wonderful smell. All right, I'm going to have to work at these for a while, but uh, when I'm finished, I'll uh, enjoy them. And then we'll move on to the bonus section of this video, which is using wood pellets. About two minutes after I turn the or not even two minutes after I turned the camera off, I just wanted to come back and show you. I flipped the sausage over to give you an idea of the grilling that's taking place. 
That is looking great. All right, just one more shot of the coals. This is 15 minutes after the flame out and I've still got enough coals down there to, well, my sausages are done and I've actually started eating them, but uh, I could have done probably two, maybe three hamburgers on top of that heat. So the coals are still down there lasting and they would have been long gone, dropped through as ash had I not put that ash plate in on top of the fire grate. Now I'm gonna enjoy my lunch or finish my lunch. I've already started it, finish my lunch and uh, then we'll set up for the next uh, demonstration. All right, it is time for coffee. My stove is, well, it's still slightly warm, but certainly easy enough to touch. Time to set the stove up for boiling some water. And I, as promised, this time I'm gonna use wood pellets. So what have I got here? I think it's a cup and a half. Maybe it's two cups I didn't measure. Or I thought I'd measure it anyway. All right, as you can see, maybe I can bring it up to the camera. I'm pretty sure that was two cups. I'll confirm if it wasn't, but it's right up to the rim here. So if you can get two cups of pellets in your wood stove without any falling out, that's a, that's a good amount because that's going to last a good long time. Now I'm going to put a little alcohol on top of that to get it going. I could use anything else, I guess, but eh, just a little alcohol. I will light that. I'm going to put the speed ring on because, of course, today I'm using the, the Adventure Cook Set. But just to get it going, I'll be able to do this. Of course, you know it is windy. All right, that lit. Now, you're not going to see a thing for a few minutes until the, the pellets really start to engage. These are hardwood pellets, so they... Uh, they're a little slower to engage, but they burn longer. That's my experience anyway. So let's take the speed ring. Now, uh, if it, the stove was a lot hotter, I'd probably use a pair, well, no, I would use a pair of pliers to do this, but I have a choice. I can either set the speed ring in down at the low level or at the higher level. Both will work for today. I'm gonna set it in at the low level like that. And what that does for me when I go to put the Stanley on is it acts as a bit, as a bit of a focuser so I'm not losing heat out around the edge. Also brings the pot a little closer to the flames as well. But uh, we'll have to wait a few minutes for those uh, coal or those pellets to light up. But that, uh, and that's when I'll bring it back when I've got some good flame going so that I can show you using the Stanley Adventure Cook Kit on the, on the Pack Stove XL with wood pellets. About three minutes later, my wood pellets have fully engaged, as you can see, and I'm ready to put on my Stanley. So, Stanley is on, nice and secure, no dampening of the airflow. There's a, now, here's one thing with pellets, and it doesn't matter the stove. I, even with my wood gas stoves, this will occur. If there's a downdraft, you will occasionally see smoke come out of the, any venting at the bottom. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the stove. That's just a condition that occurs, especially with wood pellets. Uh, they do need a lot of airflow. That's why you have to have airflow coming up from underneath them. So, But you can see, how clean is that? A nice, steady, clean flame. There's a little bit of smoke. Some of that is burning off the old soot and, and the stuff off the side of my Stanley Adventure. But uh, yeah, pellets work extremely well. And like I said, I believe it was two cups I put in there. I will make sure and I'll put it on the screen if it was any less than two cups. There's a bit of a downdraft, as I said. Sometimes that occurs and then the air drafts back up through the stove. All right, we'll uh, wrap this video up in a moment. All right, short video. All I was looking to do today was just provide you an update on the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL and how I was able to come up with something very simple to improve the ability to grill with it using hardwood found in the forest. Again, you don't need that plate. In fact, you should not use that plate if you're going to be using it with charcoal because charcoal needs the airflow underneath it. Pellets need the airflow underneath it. But as you saw, it wasn't necessary to have all that airflow just for using wood. In fact, having that plate, the ash plate in there, or it's also, as you know, it's also the, the uh, solid fuel plate when you re re flip the stove upside down. But by having that plate in there, you slow the combustion down to the point where you save your hot coals your hot embers in the stove and you have a good 10 to 15 minutes grilling time of course depending on what wood you're using and how much you load it in when to get it going with very
very simple thing to do, and I hope this helps people who want to get more out of their pack stove XL, or the regular pack stove for that matter, for grilling purposes. The other thing I showed you today was how it can be used with wood pellets. Uh, I thought I had shown that, what well, I have with the regular stove, not the XL, on how you can use it with wood pellets before, but you saw again, I got I think that went, I didn't, didn't measure it this time, but I've gotten as much as 30 minutes out of a load of wood pellets in that stove. It had to go at least that long. There was more than enough heat to bring my two and a half cups of water to a boil that I used for making my coffee, and it just continued. I was actually able to heat water on that afterwards for washing my dishes out as with as well. All right, simple update. If you have any questions about this video and anything I did with this video, any further questions about the Pack Stove XL from Simple Theory Gear, then please put them in the comments section below. If you have any requests for videos, either with the Pack Stove or any other stove or anything for that matter, put those in the comments section below. But until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.